Hello everyone, my name is Tim Tavkar and I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the T.W. Wood Galleon Art Center, located right here in Montpelier on the campus of the Vermont College of Fine Arts at 36 College Street. And we're here this afternoon with uh, Executive Director Joyce Mandeville and Philip Robertson, the curator of this wonderful new exhibit entitled uh, Montpelier's Treasures, the Legacy of T.W. Wood. So welcome the two of you. And uh, I think that it would be great to just start talking about who T.W. Wood was and uh, why he's important and why you decided to create this wonderful exhibition. Well, Thomas Waterman Wood was born and bred in Montpelier. His father ran a cabinet shop along with his uncle. Um, I'm not sure of the location. Do you know, Phil? Um, no, I'm not sure exactly. But it was early 19th century. Uh, he was apparently a self-taught artist in the main. The legend had it he found a few pots of paint left by an itinerant painter, picked them up, and the rest was history. <laughs> um, extremely well known in his time. He was famous for his portraits his copies of the old masters. He's particularly famous for his genre paintings, scenes of everyday life. Um, he was a fine etcher and engraver. His prints were extremely popular. You could compare him to the Norman Rockwell of, of his time. Um, he was a very significant painter. He was the president of the American Academy for several years. He was the president of the Watercolor Society. And he was the founder of our gallery. This is the portrait on the cover of the catalog. <clears throat> it's a pretty straightforward self-portrait by Thomas Waterman Wood in his trademark black beret. Um, and it, this, in this particular painting, it's really evident how he was influenced by Rembrandt, especially with the heavy shading to one side of his face and the, uh, the, the dark brown background, sort of vague, vagueish background. It's a beautiful, beautiful portrait. This exhibition, which is actually uh, a pretty major event, and a pretty major event just because of the number of pieces mm -hmm. that are represented, there's 107, I believe? Yep, there's 107 um, from about 600 uh, oil paintings, uh, prints, um, mostly in the 19th century, works by Thomas Waterman Wood and his contemporaries, and a small collection of early 20th century pieces, mostly from the Works Progress Administration the WPA uh, Depression Era art, um, some wonderful oil paintings and, and prints. Well, out of all those paintings, how did you choose? Um, well, that's, that's a great question. Yeah. And really, um, eight years ago, I was executive director. And that is the, one of the ma many reasons why I was asked to come back as guest curator, because I have a, a pretty excellent working knowledge of the permanent collection. Um, so I went with a lot of my favorites. Um, a lot of the important genre pieces by Thomas Waterman Woods, uh, a smattering of the, um, his friends, uh, his 19th century contemporaries, um, and then a selection from the Works Progress Administration. Um, Raphael Sawyer, uh, Joseph Stella, Jacob Lawrence, it's a fantastic collection of uh, paintings. Absolutely. And then I dug into the vault and found a handful of things that hadn't been shown to my knowledge in 10, 20 years or more, and then a few pieces that I don't think had ever been matted and framed. And the last few days, uh, including today, I've been uh, working to get the, the works framed and uh, suitable for exhibit. And a group of volunteers, including Joyce, have been helping hang the show. It's been a real group effort. Yes, Which absolutely. explains our appearance. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been painting woodwork and scrubbing floors today. So yes. I just got to sit in the office and send out press releases, so it's a little less uh, uh, wearing on the particular garb that one wears. But, you know, I, I think that it's important for people to know or understand why this man was important and why this collection and the output of his work is important and also why this particular exhibition which focuses so much on his work but also happily has uh, things that are owned by the wood that are in the wood's own collection and I think that sometimes we get a little focused on 
you know, how local this is. And of course, mm -hmm. people in Montpelier, hopefully most of them are relatively familiar with who Wood was and why his works make a difference and what contribution that uh, they make to art history. But I think it reaches far beyond the local scope of uh, even Vermont art, much less just Montpelier art and things like that. Because is, uh, weren't you telling me that uh, Wood's works were hung in really a lot of major galleries across the country? Yeah, a lot of major museums, uh, most importantly the Metropolitan, has a, a major image of Wood's of an African-American subject. In addition to being uh, a quite skilled and famous portrait painter, Wood is primarily known for his genre pieces, especially um, portrayals of the images of the African American. And unlike a lot of his uh, contemporaries that uh, painted images of the African American in sort of a comical light, Wood really painted them with a sympathetic eye. Um, obviously, as a Vermont Yankee, he had um, Vermont leanings at, of the events that happened at the Civil War, which were an important part of his uh, life. Sure. He, he was living in Tennessee at the time, where he had a lucrative business as a portrait painter. And as the Civil War began, he and his wife fled north and settled in New York City, where he eventually um, had a 10th Street studio and uh, became uh, president of the National Academy of Design and was really uh, well respected uh, in his lifetime. That's great. One of the things that T.W. Wood was famed for was his portrayal of African Americans. Uh, doing everyday things, being everyday people, which sounds not that surprising, but in those days, that wasn't the typical portrayal um, at all. They were seen um, very often in portraiture as sort of joke figures. And uh, here he's portraying a man who's obviously under the weather and um, doctoring himself. This particular print which was printed in 1883, was the most popular print of the era. Um, we still get calls about this one all the time. People, people find it in their grandmother's parlor and call us about it. And uh, so the choices that you made for the exhibition, yes. uh, you think are sort of, do they have sort of a timeline? Do they go, uh, are there things that represent certain, you know, stages of his work or, I mean, are they arranged historically or how did you decide to actually hang them? I mean, where the pieces are actually going in the gallery? Yeah, I, um, I arranged it more thematically than chronologically. Mm -hmm. um, there are a handful of his early works. It, 